Broadcasting live from the Wellness Wonderland, you're listening to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I'm Katie, and each week I chat with the most inspirational people on the planet on how to stay inspired in all areas of life. As you listen, feel free to tweet at me, at Katie Dalebout, or use the hashtag Wellness Wonderland. I'd love to hear your aha moments. So grab your headphones and listen on the go, or cuddle up with a notebook as we dive in deep with authentic conversations right here in Wonderland. Hi guys, it's Katie. Welcome back. I'm so excited for this episode. I'm going to keep this intro super duper short because we have an amazing episode with Elisa Vitti, an author and a really smart lady on women's health and hormones. And this is just a very informational episode that's also really fun and I can't wait for you to hear it. This We recorded this actually a while ago. She's since had a baby. She was very pregnant when we recorded this and you'll hear all about it in just a moment. But before that, quick announcement. Do you want to support the show? It would be so cool if you wanted to support the show. If you are finding value from this at all or if you know someone who might want this information on women's health or hormonal health, The best way to support the show is to share this episode with a friend who you think it would impact. So do that. That's awesome. Next way you can support the show if you want to take our relationship to the next level, if you know what I mean, is to head to iTunes and leave a review on iTunes. That would be way cool. Um, Just, you know, you got to launch the application. It's a bit of a process, but it takes all of two minutes. And it's so unbelievably helpful. And what I'm going to do is every month, I'm going to choose one of the new reviews and I'm going to send to that person one of my favorite books. So probably a book from, and I've been doing this already, but I've been sending books from guests. So guests I've had on, um, and I'll really tailor the book that I send you to, you know, what, I think that I'll talk to you an email to get your address and what I think you would like. So that's that. Another incentive to leave a review. But either way, it's just really nice to do. So that would be really cool. Um, another way you can support the show is you can donate to the show. If you are finding value from the show, there's a link in the show notes where you can donate, toss a couple of pennies the show's way. That would be very cool. I'm outsourcing the production and there's a lot of costs that go into the show so it would be great if you could do that um you know if you feel like it if not no worries no big deal we're still friends um but yeah that would be cool I'm really trying to get the show back up to weekly so right now it's going to be bi-weekly which is better than it was before because it was monthly ish before but yeah now it's going to be bi-weekly so you'll hear from me in two weeks a fortnight if you will And yeah, hopefully it will be weekly very, very, very soon. So I hope you guys love this episode. Leave me your feedback. The best way to leave me that feedback is in the Facebook crew, the Facebook group. I started a Facebook group. I talked about that last week. Um, But yeah, the info for that is in the show notes. Just join on Facebook. I'll approve you and you're in. Um, It's as simple as that. So that would be really cool. Email me with any questions. My email's on my website. Um, So many cool things coming for you. So many cool things. And so my newsletter, most of you are on my newsletter, but I've decided to use my newsletter differently. I'm going to make it like, I used to call it my VIP list, which I guess still works, but I think I want to call it my secret list because I'm going to start sending content to my email list that I don't publish on my blog that's... um, more raw and real and authentic and just really showcasing my writing and personal essays and stuff that I just am only going to share with the crew of people who signed up to actually hear from me instead of just, you know, everybody who happens to find my blog. Um, It's just stuff I want to share with my friends like you guys. So make sure you're signed up there. You get my quick start guide to Wonderland, which is basically... Katie's favorite things, just like Oprah. Um, You get that when you sign up for my email list. And it's basically the quick start guide to living in the wellness wonderland. So it's all my favorite things. You know, I think that self-care is really having a process for when you come out, when you're having a bad day, when you're out of the flow to come back quickly. So that's like, you know, knowing exactly what movie to watch that makes me feel good, what song to listen to, which book to read, which podcast to listen to, which friend to call, all of that. Like I think everyone should have their own unique set of tools. This is basically just mine. So you can see mine. It's it's a lot of different things. I share all of my favorites in every category from like 
food to books to, you know, you'll see when you get the list. Um, but anyways, I think that everyone should curate one of those for themselves as well. And it's a really cool, you know, way to, to be. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Leave me your feedback. I can't wait to talk to you. I love talking to you online and in person and all the time. God, I just, I love this podcast so much and I love all of you. So talk to you really soon. Peace. Welcome back, everyone, to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I am so excited for today's guest, Elisa Vidi, and all of her hormonal expertise is in the Wellness Wonderland today to share with us. And I have been looking forward to interviewing her for months, and so I'm so excited that she's here. She's about to have a baby, and she's taking the time to hang out with us today. So You probably love her just as much as I do. You know her, you love her, but if you don't, her story is super cool and and she'll get into that. But basically, she was on her way to becoming an OBGYN and she was studying at John Hopkins and then she really went on a quest, a journey to figure out her own body and discover a highly effective drug-free alternative treatment that led her away from the traditional medicine education she was in into the world of functional medicine and nutrition. So she's built since then a powerhouse business helping women reclaim control over their bodies. And she's become the founder and CEO of Flow Living, which is an amazing online resource wellness center for people. And she's written the amazing book, Woman Code, Perfect Your Cycle, Amplify Your Fertility, Supercharge Your Sex Drive, and Become a Power Source. I mean, that title, I can't even. It's just amazing. And I believe, Elisa, it's in paperback now as well. Is that correct? Yeah, we had the hardcover and the paperback. Um, And I can't believe, but like this coming May 2015 will be like the three-year anniversary. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Crazy. It's so exciting. So if you don't have the book already, get your hands on a copy of that book ASAP. And now we're going to just get into things and talk everything from hormones to femininity and and fertility. So thank you so much for stopping by Wonderland. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I love the show. I love you. It's so much fun to come on and chat with a a fellow wellness crusader. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. So I guess I'd love to, um, you know, a lot of people know about your story and your journey, but it's such a beautiful heroine's journey. And you've really been on, it really took you to the work you're doing now, but now things have changed with your pregnancy. So I would love it if you could kind of give us a brief background of, of your story a little bit and then where where you are now and how things have shifted to you in the present. Well, you know, basically, like you were saying, I was on my way to becoming an OBGYN and I had a complete hormonal collapse. You know, my my I gained all this weight. I was over 200 pounds. I you know, acne everywhere, you know, couldn't sleep, was anxious, depressed, exhausted. And, you know, for the 10 years that most girls get their period, like 12 to 22, they're getting it all the time. I got my period a total of six times over that decade. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a big nightmare. And I just felt terrible. And I looked really off and uh, I felt really scared because nobody could seem to tell me what was wrong with me. So I was researching obviously and uh, found some information that um, helped me ask the right question with my gynecologist and I was able to get her to do a test that no one had performed on me up until that point because I had been going to the doctors for a couple of years trying to figure out what was wrong. And when we did that test, she said, you're right. You do, in fact, have polycystic ovarian syndrome. I don't know how we all overlooked this. (laughs) And I said, okay, so what do we do? And she said, well, there's nothing to do. We can't fix this. Um, I can help manage the symptoms, but you're looking at a future of obesity, diabetes, infertility, heart disease, and cancer, and we'll just have to medicate you along the way based on what happens. And that that was me at 22. That was sitting in a chair in, in, a, in a doctor's office at 22. That was the future she was painting for me. And I remember in that moment having like a, a God moment, you know, yeah. where um, I just heard 
my body, my spirit, I'm, you know, whatever the cells of my body, it's just saying like, that's not the path. That's not your path. That's not what we're going to do. Meanwhile, back at the canoe, I had no idea <laughs> how I was going to get from, you know, sitting in that chair to feeling like a normal person again, a healthy person. But I really decided like, you know, that <clears throat> taking the course of medications, which she freely admitted would not make me better, um, seemed like a silly approach when maybe there was another way. And that that really, that decision changed my life, not obviously my career, but certainly changed my life. I was able to um, discover this protocol and put it together for myself such that, you know, my body completely balanced itself out. The weight came off, the skin cleared up, the periods came back. Um, but then I was able to really turn around and help other women. And for the past 12 years, um, so I've been PCOS free for 15 years. And then for the past 12 years, I've been um, helping thousands of women in 36 countries fix their hormonal issues because the protocol that I put together not only helps women with PCOS, but it helps them with amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, fibroids, infertility, whatever whatever period problem, hormonal problem you've got, um, this is the way out of it. And uh, fast forward to today, you know, remember one of the things that the doctor told me was that I would very unlikely be able to conceive naturally, yes. if at all. And at the advanced maternal age of 37, <laughs> in the good old fashioned way in my bed with my husband, um, you know, we got pregnant on the third try and I'm expecting my first child. So Yay. it's a cool thing to be able to really know that if you know exactly how to invest in your body the right way, it will yield miraculous results for you, period, pun intended. And <laughs> And that's such a joy to be able to share with so many women. Yeah, it's like when I found out you were pregnant, I just like, I mean, I would have been happy for you anyways as someone I admire, but it's just like there's this other element of happiness to it because of your story and because of what you do. And it's like, this stuff really does work. How great, you know, and she's so, <laughs> she rocks, you know, so it's, it's so good. Um, I love that so much. So what is so cool about your work and everything you do with Flow Living um, and, and in your book is that hormones are complicated. There's lots of different things and they work together in, in lots of different ways. And I think, um, and like you said, you have different protocols for, for different issues that people are having. And while I would love to keep you for like four hours and go through all of them, I would love it if we could focus on one hormonal issue of amenorrhea. And I know that a lot of people in my community, myself included, have um, struggled with, with this, which is for people who don't know that word, it's the loss of period, um, which can come from being underweight and, and other things as well. But I would love if you could talk to that specific issue a little bit and what advice you have for women who have lost their periods completely for a period of time or years um, and certain things that are important for getting that back and why it's important to have it back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's start with why it's important yeah. to have your period. <laughs> so it's super important to have your cycle because it gives you access to um, a shifting brain chemistry that actually allows you to be more successful. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I actually am invited to speak at major corporations all the time to teach, you know, uh, women leaders in, in corporate teams how to actually be more effective by leveraging their brain chemistry that's being affected by their hormones. So it's so cool to know the science behind the fact that your period can make you more powerful in the so world. So cool, yeah. Right? I, I mean, like, no one tells us that. We instead are told, like, nah, you know, it's like the monthly curse. And, like, you know, we have this sort of thing that we want to avoid it. And it's this bad liability. But it's really, it's quite the opposite. So there's that. And also, obviously, you want to restore it because when you don't have your period, it means that you're eating in a way and living in a way that's actually prematurely hormonally aging you. And one of the biggest phenomenons that I'm observing in my work, um, because this is all I do, um, is that women 
who are 20, in their 20s and 30s, um, have the biochemistry of women in their 40s and 50s, mm. meaning they have really irregular cycles, missing periods altogether, infertility, low sex drive, mood issues, etc. And they're doing, they're having this because they're not eating in a way that's actually allowing their bodies to manufacture adequate levels of hormones. You know, hormones are made from one thing, amino acids. You have to have protein to get access to amino acids. They're stabilized in one thing, which is a lipid ring. So you need to have essential fatty acids from like avocado, sunflower seeds, et cetera, to have access to those essential fatty acids. And then they are communicating with each other with, with the use and the help of other micronutrients like vitamin D3, magnesium, glutathione, selenium. You have to eat those things in order to have them be most bioavailable. So you really need to feed your body to manufacture adequate levels of hormones. And if you have amenorrhea um, due to low body mass, then one of the things that's going on for you is that your metabolism and your diet are not working in a way that's supporting your hormones. So the protocol really addresses this by cumulatively um, exposing you to more macronutrients that provide your endocrine system with all the building blocks it needs in the form of micronutrients to make more hormones and to get your cycle back. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. So over time, it will come back if you give your body what it needs, those building blocks to build up those hormones. That's right. And we usually see this happen within a three-month period. Amazing. Are there yeah. any dangers in that of once you get it back and you're back in alignment, are there dangers from a perspective of not having had it? Like, are there anything you should just be aware of for moving forward since that's been an issue for you. So it doesn't either not necessarily happen again, but it doesn't throw you off balance from not having had it for a period of time. No, I mean, again, once you move your body into a healing direction, then you're good to go. I mean, the only thing to keep you on track, so to speak, and to not have you fall off the wagon is to remember that your period today is telling you about your fertility tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you're missing your period altogether, it means you're not making enough estrogen and progesterone to maintain a pregnancy, for example. Um, when you get your period back, if there are other symptoms that crop up, like all of a sudden you have PMS, that's another indication that down the road um, fertility might be complicated. So looking at your period every month is a great self-check to do. And we teach women how to look at what things um, so that they can really gauge, you know, not only how well their hormones are balanced this, this month, but what little um, tweaks they might need to do the following month to get back on track. So you really want to use your period once you get it back as a, your best health guide, right? It's like a check you can do every month to see, are you, are you truly still healthy or are there some things you need to double up your efforts on? That's so great. It's like a road sign. So on the other end of that coin, for people who struggle with very heavy periods and very painful periods, and like you said, PMS, um, while that could be caused from, from many issues, and I know you would probably need to know more information about exactly what protocol, but are there maybe one or two things um, for people kind of struggling with those types of issues that would be takeaways that they could get from this conversation? Absolutely. I mean, when we're talking about dysmenorrhea, which is heavy periods, painful periods, heavy clotting, you know, prolonged bleeding, um, what we're really talking about here is way too much estrogen in the body and, and compounded with um, difficulty with the body being able to break down that estrogen. So the first thing to do, of course, is to do everything in your power to eliminate exposure to uh, outside forms of es synthetic estrogen. So that would include any sort of chemicals in skincare products, cleaning products, etc., which none of you are using because you listen to the Wellness Wonderland. Right. <laughs> but in case you still have stuff, 
from Sephora, you might need to check that out. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, we make our own over here. <laughs> I know. I, I love that. <laughs> so, you know, really do an audit of the things you're cleaning with and you're putting on your skin. But outside of that, the next thing that we have to really work on, oh, and of course, I know you're all eating organic. Um, but <laughs> outside of that, what we have to work on then, of course, is really helping your body break down estrogen more quickly, more efficiently. And that's really where the food piece comes in. So, you know, this is really why kale is such a superfood because it helps the liver detoxify. Um, having juices, uh, you know, some raw green juice also helps give the liver all the different micronutrients it needs. Um, taking a B vitamin, really great. The liver needs to be fully stocked and loaded to do its phases of detoxification to help you break down estrogen fast. Um, and you've got to get those bowels going. So again, fiber, 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 not colonics. Mm. Okay. <laughs> because um, you don't want to do it in a way that disturbs intestinal flora. You want to do it every day, right? And right. your body your body has four powerful detoxification systems, one of which is the bowel, one of which is the liver that we're talking about right now. And you want those to be working optimally every day. You don't want to just sort of do this episodic massive detox because it actually can make you much worse. Um, so that's another little tidbit I would say is – look for daily gentle detoxification of estrogen versus some sort of big process. Yeah, so good. So I've heard you speak a lot about how we are meant to feel good for the entire month, not just part of it. And we've, yeah. been, we've been talking about this, um, you know, really this whole conversation so far, but, but I would love if you could go a little bit deeper into why our cycles are so important. Clearly, you, you've already told us when you started to mention that, you know, our cycles bring us close. I've heard you say before, too, they like make us more spiritual and that they're make, they make us closer to God, which is just so interesting. And they, they can really open us up. They make us more powerful in so many ways. So I would love if you could kind of get into that even deeper and why our cycles are important and why embracing the different phases is important. And I've even heard you talk about that. You do that even in your business. So if you could kind of just talk about that as a whole, that would be awesome. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I wish we could talk about it for 17 years. Me I love too. This, this is like the best conversation, right? You'll because have to come back post baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking about like the biggest, most important secret that for whatever reason women are being kept from. And, you know, I stumbled upon this completely by accident. You know, I was just looking to feel better. And then as I was researching sort of the functionality of, of our um, cyclical biochemistry, I just, I mean, it was like being slapped in the face multiple times. I just, I just could not believe what I was looking at, that, that it had never been presented in any biology textbook or anything, you know, just nowhere. And I was looking at it and I thought, oh my God, that blueprint that is here for us is actually the most powerful form of biotechnology on the planet. So think about it this way. And let's just take a pit stop in physics for a minute, okay? okay? And we'll come back to the biochemistry. So let's compare and contrast two things. So what we're talking about here is leverage, all right? So, or let's even just say success. Success defined from a physics definition would be getting from point A to point B with the least amount of friction and the least amount of time, okay? That's success, right? And, you know, we would kind of think about that in our own personal lives. It's like, yeah, I want to accomplish my goals as quickly as I can, right? That's success. Right. So let's look at uh, option number one, right? We're going to call this push technology. So you've got like a hockey puck and you're going to slide it across the floor from point A to point B. It's going to take a little bit longer and there's a lot of friction between the hockey puck and the floor, right? So it's it's good. It's good technology. It's not the best, right? Let's compare it to another tech, which we're going to call cycle tech. So same point A and point B. Now imagine instead of a hockey puck, you've got a wheel, like a bicycle wheel, right? And you roll that wheel across the same space. Obviously, in the time that it takes to get from point A to point B with the, with the hockey puck, 
you'll actually go beyond point B with the bicycle wheel because the friction is so much less and the speed is so much faster. So when we think about which is more powerful, the cycle tech wins hands down. And in fact, the entire industrial revolution was built on cyclical technology, right? Remember, they harnessed water energy, right, by putting in those little water wheels everywhere. Right. And then they harness like dams and, you know, all sorts of things to power steam engines. So cyclical technology is something that you have embedded in your neurochemical architecture. It's already inside of you. You're sitting on it. And no one ever seemed to point that out to me. <laughs> and so there I was my whole life trying to do the push technology, trying to, to push the same set of goals, the same set of objectives in a 24-hour period up the same damn hill each and every day. Because that is the masculine, right? Where we have a 24-hour hormonal cycle, right? The male hormonal cycle is 24 hours. So it makes sense that they would base their entire um, orientation to life around that you know, push technology. Whereas we have a 30-day cycle and we have four distinct phases and it's all about leveraging that fluctuation in that cyclical fashion. So that's my secret to getting everything done, doing it all, having it all without continuously relapsing into sickness or hormonal imbalance or stress and anxiety or depression. It's how I, it's how I do how I do. You know what I mean? Right. And it's so cool once you learn the patterns and um, really start to play with them because um, it just frees you up. Yeah, and yeah. certain at certain times of the month absolutely are um, – you're naturally more inclined to actually experience God based on your neurochemistry at certain times of the month. Certain times of the month you're more naturally inclined um, – to, you know, be a master at, um, verbal skills or, you know, pr you know, giving a big presentation or going on dates. I mean, it's just, it's so fabulous. Once you learn all these different, um, phases, what you can do with them. And I love, love, love teaching that, but it's, that's like a whole, yeah, <laughs> that's whole another show. It's like a whole another show, but it's what we teach in the fourth step of the protocol on the woman code system online. So, so many women who come to us are coming to us because they want to fix their hormonal problems, but I can't help myself by the time they're feeling better. I have to let them know about this different architecture yeah. because how could I not, you know, you have to, once you get well, the whole purpose of getting well is not to be healthy. The whole purpose of getting your hormones balanced is not just to eliminate symptoms. It's so that you can really leverage this neurochemical, biochemical framework and engage in your life in a way that allows you to get wherever it is you want to go with the least stress on your body and the most pleasure. I mean, it's like the secret to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Capital IT. Yeah, yeah it's... <laughs> It's really cool to, I mean, it's how you're a superwoman, right? It's like your right. secret sauce. And and what's so cool is that, you know, you've studied this extensively and we, we can't even get into right now all the ways to, to leverage that. And I want to talk a little bit about your program. So if people, if the, people are like, yeah, this is cool. And I want to know what she's talking about, how they can, how can they can get involved with that. But first, I just have to say that like, the way that this was designed, whoever designed it, like it's so complicated and cool and interesting and just so well designed that it's like no human could do that. But what you've done, Elisa, is studied it and looked at it and put names to it and really allowed us to understand what's going on naturally. And that is just so cool. And I'm just so grateful that you exist and that we're both on the planet at the same time. So Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, really awesome. So if people do want to learn more about how they can leverage that for themselves and join your program, are they able to do that online? Oh yeah. I mean, just go to flowliving.com and the best place to start when you come to the site mm -hmm. is to take the hormonal evaluation because I promise you, you've never ever looked at your hormones this way. And it's so important to really start to see where your weak links are in the endocrine chain of events. Um, because then you feel excited about, Oh, you know what? I really can fix this with food. And, yeah. um, and that's so, so important because I know that's not 
the memo you're getting from wherever you're getting your information from. You're kind of just being told, well, you know, it's the pill or it's surgery or it's just wait and see. And none of those are good options. Not good enough. I mean, we want the best in our fashion life. We want the best in our food life. We want the best relationships. We want the best careers. But we settle for suffering when it comes to our health. I don't see how that fits in a lifestyle where you're looking to be fully expressed and on full, you know, high vibration um, and in alignment with your spirit and your divine purpose. You know, your job is simply to just create that environment inside your body where you can thrive, where you can be a channel open, wide open for inspiration, for serendipity, for the divine to guide. And, you know, if your hormones are all out of whack, it's like putting static, you know, on a phone call or, you know, on the radio. It's just like you can't get the message clear yeah. enough. And, you know, you want to keep your body this beautiful, open channel for, you know, for all the things you're, you're trying to create in your life. And I just, to me, that's really the game. The game is not to just eliminate symptoms. That's a nice side effect. That's easy, easy, easy. Um, the game is being powerful as a woman. That's, that's the, that's the stuff. <laughs> mm, that's going to be a tweetable. I, I love that. That is so good. And we'll have all the links below to her program and, and how you can find out about everything that she does and everything flow living. So I'm so glad that you talked about that a little bit. Um, another thing kind of switching gears here that I've heard you speak about in other interviews is the dangers of girls starting their periods younger and younger, like the age of 10. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk about that happening and also address the dangers that are long-term for those girls. Like, will that, since they started so young, could that have long-term effects on girls in the future? Yeah. So what what you're referring to is what, what we call precocious puberty. So it means that it starts kind of really too early. And that's a result of the same reasons that women, so many more women today are suffering with period problems and infertility issues and beyond. We're living in a time, all of us, whether we're 10 or we're 40, we're living in a time where our delicate endocrine system is under siege, like by toxins, pesticides, stress levels, you know, not knowing how to eat for your hormones, just not having that information alone is like enormous. Um, and so these young girls, because they're eating foods that really are endocrine disruptive and they're being exposed to chemicals um, that are highly estrogenic, um, you know, they're starting puberty so young. And the repercussions is just simply that the reasons why their puberty starts young it sets them up exactly the same way for them to have period problems, fertility problems, et cetera, mood disorders, um, all of that, metabolic issues sooner. So that's really the bad news. And it's really, it's scary. You know, um, there's wonderful research coming out of both East and West Coast major universities where they look at um, what's going on in suburbia and the levels of xenoestrogenic endocrine disruptive chemicals that are being, um, you know, sort of spilled off, run off into like little water, you know, streams and um, public parks and all of that from the water supply. It's so bad now that frogs are spontaneously switching gender. No way. And fish are no longer – so fish fish become the gender they're going to become after they leave the egg stage, at which is all happens outside of the, the – um, you know, the eggs are just laid into the, into the water and then they turn into little tadpoles and fish and, and then they turn a gender. But so because the water is so saturated with runoff from different chemicals that fish are very rarely turning male now. Wow. And it's really bad. And so, of course, you've got little girls running around on soccer fields that have been sprayed heavily with pesticides that really disrupt the endocrine system. Or you have parents who are like way into keeping their lawns perfect. And again, the pesticide situation. Um, 
not choosing organic foods, having certain processed foods in the house, all of these things really, the fact that it's happening to the degree that it's happening is, is shocking. But the fact that it isn't happening a hundred percent of the time is miraculous in my opinion, just because of how bad it is these days with all this chemical exposure. So, you know, if you're a mom and you have a young daughter, um, you've got to really protect her endocrine system as well as your own. Um, and if your child is already in a precocious pubescent situation, you've got to take action immediately while she's still open to listening to you. <laughs> um, because, you know, it's part of the normal psychological development of a, of a tween to stop listening, right? They have to right. separate from their parents. So if she's, if she's still nine and 10, you know, it's time to teach her about her body, what, what these chemicals are doing. And then of course you have to feed her very, very differently in order to uh, prevent the problem from getting worse. You know, she'll, she'll obviously continue to have her period now going forward, but you can prevent her from developing fibroids and endometriosis and, all sorts of things um, if you if you help her um, and you can learn how to do that um, with just yourself going through the protocol online um, and then taking it to her in the kitchen and at, at, at you know meal times. Mm, so good. I'm glad we addressed that for sure. It's really interesting. So again, switching gears, um, this is probably like my favorite study that you've mentioned and and thing that I've heard you talk about, but. My question is, why are relationships so important for women's health? And I've heard you talk before in an interview about how we can attract the ideal partner for us based on hormones. And I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. You know, this is this is one of the benefits of not choosing to use the pill to treat your symptoms. Um, there's been a famous, it's called the sweaty t-shirt study. Um, they did it at Oxford. They also did it here at Harvard. Um, it, it's, um, really, really cool. So basically they so saturated, cool. they saturated a couple of different t-shirts, um, with different men's sweat. And then they had women, um, a group that was not on the pill and a group that was on the pill smell these variety of, you know, t-shirts. And the women who were not on the pill picked the most genetically variant um, partners based on the pheromone scent. And why that's important is because when you're making a new human being in the future, right, when you decide to reproduce, the way that you actually set that, that new child up for success is by... Uh, mixing the most varied genetic information because you get a stronger immune system. And that's what keeps somebody really healthy. The women who were on the pill <laughs> alternatively picked the men with whom they had the most genetic similarity. So they actually would be set up to have more problematic reproduction and less healthy children as a result. But interestingly enough, the this sort of social application in just in terms of the relationship is that the people who choose the people, the partners who are most different have an easier time relating to each other. And then those that were on the pill that picked those more similar partners, um, they had more friction, more disappointment, more frustration. And then when they went off the pill, felt like, I can't stand this person. <laughs> So and I don't understand why. <laughs> so it's really powerful to appreciate that, you know, your your period, your hormones, it's all there to set you up to succeed, not to drag you down. But of course, when we're not told any of this information, we make major decisions on our health care and really our whole life because we want to like, you know, be we want to know with predictability. I mean, people go on the pill for very interesting reasons. They go on it to clear up their skin. They go on it because they want to control exactly when their period starts and ends. Um, they want to just not have to deal with symptoms. And, you know, th those are all reasonable reasons to, to want to use a medication like that. But it's a band-aid. You know, it's a Band-Aid and what you, what you risk is, you know, beyond just some of the little things we've talked about. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. It's just, there's so much at stake, um, for your health and your life when you, when you're using it as a Band-Aid, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're using it and you're perfectly healthy, that's great. But if you have underlying issues, 
um, you really want to take the time to address those first and then reevaluate what you want to do with the pill. Mm. I love that study. I'm so glad that you were able to share that. It's like my yeah, favorite yeah. thing. Um, so I guess one last thing before we kind of get into the Alisa behind flow living. How are your sexuality and femininity so crucial for healthy hormones and overall health and wellness? And any tips on really amping up your sexuality and femininity? Well, you know, this is a great question because now we're talking about the chemistry of sex, which is so much fun to talk about. (laughs) Um, So, you know, here's the deal. At a really high level, the more orgasmic plateau, the more time you spend in orgasmic plateau versus climax, okay, which is like the big ta-da at the end, right, when everything's all done. The part leading up to that where you really are feeling all the sensations and you know it's all going to happen, the longer you can stretch that time out, the more oxytocin and nitric oxide you produce. And the more oxytocin and nitric oxide you produce, the more it heals your hormonal imbalance (laughs) faster. So you can not only eat your way into um, more balanced hormones, but you can also use pleasure um, to help you get there more quickly, which to me is a powerhouse combination because notice I have not mentioned supplements once. <laughs> so it's really about utilizing all the tools that your body has to offer you because it's by design, you know, totally there to set you up to be perfectly balanced. All you have to do is engage the tools. And that's what's really cool about, um, you know, engaging your sexuality in that way to help you feel better. So yeah, I would say ditch the vibrator. I know, just trust me. (laughs) Ditch the vibrator and get out a little aloe cadabra and really spend as much time as you can breathing into the sensation of the orgasmic plateau. Don't rush to the end. See if you can work up to like 15 minutes or more once a week. Um, The health benefits are enormous. there's there are a few colleagues of mine who are um, spe- specialists in tantric sexual energy that are in their 70s. These are women who you would look at and not know how old they were because the vitality that they have from keeping their hormones so young and vibrant from really expanding that orgasmic plateau stage it's it's unbelievable. I mean it's it's totally something to like live into long term yeah. <laughs> look up to. Um, and how cool is that, that you don't need anyone, just you, yourself, and yourself um, <laughs> to, to get you there is really, really great. So cool. Love that. So now I want to get personal with you and the woman behind all of this. And it's so cool to talk about all of this and how all of this was designed because it really goes to show wow, everything had such a purpose in the way it was designed. And and the more that we talk about it, just the more that you realize how cool it is and how amazing the universe is. So thank you for that, first of all. And now getting to to your story and, and how your life is now and being superwoman and how you kind of take care of yourself and live in your wellness wonderland, I would love if you could walk us through your morning routine and some of the specifics you do to start your day and why that's important for how the rest of your day goes. Yeah. So first and foremost, I never, never use an alarm clock. (laughs) Um, So I find that that is like one of the worst things to kind of kick off like a cortisol reaction. Like you wake up like, oh my God, you know, and what's happening? It's like an alarm, you know? Um, So I don't use an alarm clock. I just tell myself when I want to wake up the night before, I give myself a time and I wake up at that time. That is so cool. It's cool. Did that take some time though? No. (laughs) You all can try it right now. Really? Go to sleep tonight. I mean, the other thing is I also, you know, am living in a very like cyclical fashion and pro-hormonal fashion and I eat really well. And so my body is really responsive to very subtle stimulation. So if I say, okay, I want to wake up at nine today or seven, um, I can, it's like just, it's utilizing that mind body connection because my channel is so clear and open. 
Um, it's not complicated. So it didn't take time for me, but I didn't start doing it, you know, until I was already healthy. So get yourself hormonally healthy. And then yes, this is not a big problem. That is but so you can, cool. That but, like gives me but, chills. But experiment, you know, give it a try. Maybe it'll work for you anyway. And you never know. You're, you may have magical powers that I don't have. I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, so that's the I first doubt thing. that. You're superwoman. <laughs> first thing is no alarm clock. Um, and then I also give myself like a good hour in the morning to just, you know, slowly start my day. I really love like to be cat-like in the morning and really just like, you know, stretch into the day. So I'll make myself a smoothie. I'll have a cup of herbal tea. I'll, you know, write something. I like to write in the morning, whatever I'm working on, like for ha- just like a half an hour. You know, I don't, I, maybe sometimes I go on a roll, it's like an hour, but really short, you know, and then I'll get in the shower and put myself together. So I really, you know, it's like first I feed myself, then I nurture my spirit, you know, and for me writing and, meditating. It's like all the same thing. I'm in the zone. Um, and then I get my body, you know, ready for the day. Um, and then I do something that I really love, which is, um, I use my, again, not to sound like a total nerd, but I am uh, prefrontal cortex. I then go into my real like executive functioning and I love to look at my goals for the month that I set out at the beginning of every cycle, my, my follicular phase. And I look at the goals for the month and I say, okay, so what am I working on today? And I'll make my agenda for the day. And I get really organized and then I let it go. And then I just have the day flow. And it's just really nice, like a nice little ritual where I start my day off with lots of pleasure and taking care of myself. Then I get really organized and then I just kind of flow into the day. So cool. cool. That sounds lovely. Yeah. So after that, then, can you walk us through the evening rituals and how do you kind of turn off from the day and wind down? Yeah. Um, You know, I was raised um, sitting down to dinner with the family. So me and my hubby sit down to home cook dinner and um, we talk about the day and, you know, just kind of that's my breaking point is dinner time. I try not to work after dinner. Um, because really, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you can work all the time. So it's really, it's really a choice (laughs) just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And I find that if I work after dinner, I kind of wake myself up and I have a harder time going to sleep because I'm naturally more of a night owl and I don't like to hyper stimulate myself at night. So dinner, we sit down, we connect. Um, and then I might, you know, do a little reading or, watch something with my hubby on TV for a little bit. And then I'm just, I go, you know, do a little stretching, a little restorative yin yoga. And then I'm off to dreamland as much as early as I can. I love that. That sounds lovely too. It'd be so fun to spend the day with you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you cook dinner a lot then with, and with your husband and and have meals together. How do you plan your days when it comes to what you're going to eat? Or do you kind of just go with what feels right and and follow your cravings? Could you talk about that a little bit? Oh, yeah. I eat cyclically. So um, I I actually only cook once a week um, because I'm busy and I like to eat when I'm hungry. So when I say we sit down to home cook food, it's like I'm just reheating what I've made on a Sunday. So, you know, Saturdays, um, I'll plan out the weekly menu and then my hubby likes to go get all the groceries for me. And then Sunday, you know, we'll cook a big batch of stuff. Um, and then we have it for the week. So I usually will make, it depends on where I am in the cycle and, and, um, you know, which foods I'm highlighting if I'm doing more soups and stews or if I'm doing more raw salads or what kind of protein we're having. So it's every week it changes based on my hormonal patterns. And my husband will be the first one to tell you that, um, men, men should embrace this diet (laughs) because, you know, it makes their variety of foods much more interesting, but also he, his experience of his own health has, dramatically improved since getting in the flow with me. So, you know, his intestines, his immunity, his mood, his energy, his stamina, all of those things have increased because, you know, he too has to make hormones and they're all made from the same stuff that ours are made from. So it's great. It's a mutually beneficial process. So I'd like to keep it simple. I don't, you know, I'm no fancy chef. I'm a really good home cook and I like to just make, um, 
you know, batches of things that are easy to like assemble into different versions of this, you know, a similar theme over the course of a week. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, going off of that, you mentioned your husband and and how supportive he is of this. Um, And I'm thinking about, you know, maybe people listening, if this is new to them, it's likely it will definitely be new to their partner, boyfriend, or husband or whatever. And do you have any tips um, of people of how to talk to them about their cycles and about their hormones in a way that doesn't make them feel like they're trying to like change lots of things, but they're just able to talk about it in, in a calm way? Do you have any tips around that? Oh, yeah. Men love this information. In fact, um, I teach uh, a specific workshop to men about how to decode women so they can be more successful nice. in their relationships. This is, um, it's so straightforward. Men want to win with you in relationship, right? And one of the biggest mysteries that they feel that they really fail us on is around our changing nature. Men observe it. It's very obvious to them that we're very different creatures week over week. We seem to be in denial about it or we want it to not be true for whatever reason, but they know that it is. And why wouldn't we just all be on the same page? So one of the things to just share with them is just say, listen, I'm learning about my cycle here and I don't know everything. But what I do know is that each week, because of my changing hormones and how that's affecting my brain chemistry, I actually would love to have different types of conversation with you, different types of social activities with you, and different types of sex with you. Those are the three things that men want to serve you, right? They want to win with you around how to talk to you, what kinds of activities you guys are doing together, and of course, in bed, right? Yeah. So if you can just map out for them, and then this, I would literally pull out the chart in chapter five of Woman Code and say, okay, so here's what is happening in each of these weeks. So this is the kind of sex I want to be having in these weeks. And let, let and then just do one month where you experiment with it. It's so much fun. I remember when I first started dating my now husband, you know, <laughs> Of course, I let him know all about this right away. (laughs) Um, And he was so excited to have a game plan because, you know, he was like, oh, my gosh, I can – I know that I can do, like, the right three things each week to make this woman who I love feel really good and be really happy with me. And like, it's three things. It's not like a zillion things. Yeah. And I don't have to understand it all. I just need to know what those things are and I'll do it. And he, you know, and that's, like, we joke about how we don't have like a, a chore wheel or anything at home. <laughs> he just knows where I am in my cycle and like, he knows what to do. Mm-hmm. So it's beautiful to have a relationship where, um, you're really honoring each other's processes. And by the way, as he learns more about your own how to observe you, he'll also start to learn how to observe himself. You know, I mentioned before, men have a 24-hour hormonal cycle and learning, for example, there is one perfect time for the both of you to come together and have like the best sex of your life each day and during the month. So knowing when that is for him and for you is really cool. You know, you don't have to hit it every time, (laughs) but, and I mean, hit that magical day and time, but, you know, just knowing about it is like, oh, it doesn't have to be just so accidental. Like we could really um, sync up a lot more than we realize. And we're a lot more similar than we, than we realize as well. So yeah. I love men. I love women teaching men about themselves. I love men learning about women. They, they so want to soak this up like a sponge and just make you feel good. Trust me. Don't be afraid. Don't, you know, you, you just, just tell them what they need to do. And they're like, I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. It's fabulous. So good. Everybody wants the knowledge. Yes. So let's wrap with some quick fire questions. Are you ready for them? I think so. Okay. Just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Favorite color? Purple. Favorite yoga pose? Downward dog. Favorite day of the week? Ah, <sighs> Thursday. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I love Thursday. Yeah, it's like <laughs> anticipation for the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Favorite phase of your cycle? 
Oh, girl, you know I can't pick one. <laughs> but I guess selfishly, I love the bleeding week because it's just all about me. And I love that. That's that's a yummy week. Nice. Yeah. Favorite hour of the day? Oh. Ooh. Oh, I, that's, that's tough. I love like 9 a.m. before I start my day, but I also love like 7, 30, 8 o'clock, like when it's like the witching hour. I love that too. Yeah, yeah, they're both good. I love the mornings though. Yeah, yeah. Favorite vegetable? <sighs> you are making me pick things <laughs> I don't usually have to pick from. Um, favorite vegetable? I love everything green. I mean, I love my leafy greens, so I guess I'll just say that category yeah. is my that's yeah. cool. Favorite <laughs> fruit? Well, this pregnancy has been peaches. Peaches, like, every day. <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm going to say peaches. <laughs> I love that. Um, what are you most excited about about being a mother? Oh, my goodness. I am excited about, you know, holding space for this being to be fully expressed. And I'm excited about also modeling and holding for myself, um, you know, a deep commitment to the same quality of self-care that I currently give myself, that, that, that doing those two things are inextricably linked. And the practice of that is like the yoga of love between a mother and a child. So I um, am looking forward to stretching into that. Oh my gosh, it's so, I don't know why I'm like tearing up. That's so beautiful. Talk about <laughs> hormonal. Um, that was so beautiful. I love that so much. Um, where do you hear your intuition most? And how do you remind yourself to follow it when you do? You know, I I hear it during moments of transition most. I hear it um, during the, you know, my menstrual week the most. Um, and, and I hear it when I'm trying to stretch into a new phase of my journey. Like if I'm building something new or if I have desire for, for something to create something, I really feel it in those moments, those three moments. And so, um, I really pay attention. I mean, my gut my intuition, my spirit has been leading me all this time. And it, the more you give, the more you allow yourself to feel it and, and honor it, the more fearless you become in just trusting that the whole time you're being led to exactly the perfect place where you need to be. And there's just such joy, like whenever you get a transmission, like, oh, good, I wonder where we're going to end up now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's a, it's a knowing, but also a not knowing. And the combination of those two things with dancing with your intuition is what keeps life so juicy. Mm, so good. So my next question is about exercise and movement. And I want to know your, your favorite ways to move and why moving and exercise in a certain way is important for her hormonal health. Yeah. Well, I actually teach a specific method of exercise that maps on to the four phases of your cycle. So you want to exercise differently each week of your 30 day period. Um, but for me, you know, my favorite, my favorite forms of exercise are all the very yin or restorative because we, especially I'm just, I just know your listeners are, are all kick ass like you, right? Trying to do a million things and build amazing creations in the world. And, you know, and I'm that way too. And you don't want to keep draining your battery, right? So I love to think about exercise as a way to nourish myself, just like I'd like to think about food. So I love, you know, restorative yoga. I love um, Pilates because it's about like, building that deep, strong core. And I love walking. Those are like my three favorite favorites because they're gentle, but they're effective and they're so pleasurable. Like I never hurt or am like drained after that. Yeah. You know, and I, and I just think life is really, if I have to choose between 
I don't know. I mean, and listen, I know there are people for whom like doing the stuff like CrossFit and Tough Mudder is like so pleasurable for them. That's awesome. But for me, what's most pleasurable is like, you know, just feeling really good in my body. And those are the things that really do it for me. Yeah. And honestly, I question if, you know, and I don't know, maybe people listening will have a different opinion than me on this, but I question how pleasurable that actually is for people in the moment. I'm sure that after you feel really accomplished and good about yourself, but like, is it really that pleasurable to like do all that crazy stuff in the moment? You know, like you have to kind of ask. So I, I mean, like I, that. Do, I hear you. I think there's a little bit of an ego and mental drive there versus like, yeah, you know, if you're in your body the whole time, your body's going to be like, ow. Right, right. <laughs> Versus if you're in your body and in your, you know, mental state when you're doing yin yoga, you're going to be like, mmm, yummy, you know, like, I mean, so it just, which one are you going to choose? Um, I think it's an easy choice, but, you know, I think we're so afraid of our bodies and we're so afraid of not looking whatever the way we think we're supposed to that we really go at it um, with this very aggressive, masculine you know, that like almost warrior, like I'm going to kick my own ass kind of energy. And I don't know wh- wh- where that comes from because really the whole purpose of separating from your own mother in um, pubescence is so that you can learn how to mother yourself with compassion and love and nourishment on every level, just the way you want to. Because, you know, everybody's got that thing that they wish their mom did this or dif- differently, whatever. Um, your whole journey back to yourself is really about becoming your most delicious, fabulous version of your own mother. And that obviously includes the most lovely treatment of yourself, right? And so exercise just an extension of that. Whoa, you just blew my mind with that one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that one about being your own mother and the things that you wish that you would have had doing for yourself and your self-care, like, oh my gosh, so spot on and so powerful. I'm, I've am i never heard you say that before, so that was really cool. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Um, what is the biggest women's health misconception you feel like you're constantly having to clear up for people? That you can't fix your hormones, that you're, you know, you're, you're supposed to not feel good one half of the month and your period's supposed to suck and, you know, whatever you knew, whatever is wrong with you can only be fixed with medication or surgery. And that's just not true. Not on a, not when we look at the body's physiology and biochemistry, not at all. It's so good. I'm so glad that you're here to, to tell people that because so many people just, just don't hear that. And it's, it's, it's crazy to me. So I'm so glad we're spreading that message. Um, what is one practical self-care action you take for yourself? That's every day, pretty consistent, non-negotiable for you. Eating. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you cannot separate this girl from her food. No way, no how. Nice. Um, It's like, you know, food is the foundation. If I'm going to have a good day, the food better be top notch, you know? So, um, even when I'm thinking about, you know, the, the postpartum period, the fourth trimester, right. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, my, I know that 90% of how I'm going to feel has everything to do with what I'm eating. I'm already planning recipes for someone to come and cook for me. It's like, you know, it's like non-negotiable for me. 90% of your quality of life is based on the foods that you're taking in. And I, You know, I don't care if I'm traveling, I bring food. If I'm, whatever I'm doing, it's like, what's the food situation? (laughs) Yay. It's so good. And it's a perfect segue to to my next couple questions. So what is your, in the last week, what is the best thing you've eaten in like the last week? Oh, in the last week? Yeah. Um, Oh, let's see. Oh, I made the most amazing, I made up a new soup. Yeah. (laughs) So- it was, um, I sauteed a bunch of onions and celery. I'm giving you the recipe. I yeah. sauteed a bunch of onions and celery and garlic and sweet potato cubes. Oh my and gosh. Then I want this now. <laughs> it was so good. So I sauteed all that up and then I added a bunch of water and some um, salt. And then I 
pureed that all with a hand blender. And then when that was like to the right consistency, I added in a bunch of chopped kale and black beans and it was a little cumin. Oh my God. So good. So good. That sounds delicious. I wish we could just like cheers mugs of that right now. (laughs) (laughs) What's your go-to staple breakfast? Is it usually the same or do you switch it up? I switch it up week over week based on where I'm in the cycle. But, um, you know, I like, um, I'll make smoothies with like avocado and spinach and frozen blueberries and flax and, you know, lots of superfoods or I'll do, um, uh, poached eggs over a little bit of buckwheat. Um, I'll do, you know, veggies with, you know, sunflower seeds and quinoa. I mean, I love breakfast. Breakfast is, that's why I take so long in the morning to get ready. Cause I'm like, what am I having for breakfast today? Let me have something really good. <laughs> I love that. I don't rush breakfast. Breakfast is never on the go um, because it's just, you know, it's like how my day is going to go is how breakfast was. What about snacks? What if you are on the go and you need something? What's your favorite go-to on-the-go snack if you did have a need to eat something in between meals? Yeah, I mean – I usually don't, but if I do, it's like an apple is a great snack because it just, you know, travels so well. Um, What else? What else could I – what do I snack on? Nuts maybe? Uh, A little. Yeah, a little bit. Like, you know – oh, you know what I do do sometimes are two dates and two Brazil nuts because I love getting the Brazil nuts in during the day. Yeah. 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 So I'll crack open the dates, throw out the pit, and I put the Brazil nut inside as the pit. <laughs> that sounds amazing. And I take that with me and they're like dessert. I mean, it's They so should decadent. sell those at the grocery store line as like a little pick me up. Sometimes I'll throw in a square of dark chocolate with that. It's like heaven. Whoa. Delicious. Too yeah, much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Decadent. <laughs> yeah. That sounds amazing. Um, so what is – your favorite, if you could, not favorite, if you could have a superhero power for a day, what would it be? Ooh. Superhero power. Oh, you asked some good questions, <laughs> Miss, Miss Wellness Wonderland. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm running through like the superhero list of like, would I want to fly? Would I want to like hear people's thoughts? Would I want to reverse time? Would I want to be able to travel into the future? Uh, I mean, really, I'm good. Like, I love, <laughs> I love whatever uh, you know. I love my experience of life. Um, but maybe, maybe slowing down time a little bit might be really mm, fun. No one's ever know? said that. Yeah. Maybe like in those certain moments where you're just having one of those magical. You know, sometimes you're having those moments where it's just like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is my life. Yes. Like, maybe just being able to, like, just a little bit hang adjust there. the tempo. Yeah, and just hang there. Oh, my God, bit. I need that. That could be really fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or just getting all of life to, to be like that. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You can't abuse your superhero powers. Yeah. That's definitely one of the common themes in all of those comic books, right? That's super true. That's super true. (laughs) Only use your powers for good. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, So good. I love that. All right. So final question, my signature question, what does living in a wellness wonderland mean to you? Mm. To me, it means living in the flow of my my biochemistry, living in alignment with my hormones so that I have the most optimal – internal ecosystem to really live my most, you know, amazing by design, led by desire, fueled by divine energy life. That's really my job. My job is to just keep the channel as open and clear as possible so I can live my full expression. That's, that's my wellness wonderland plan. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Elisa, and everyone for listening. This has been such an amazing conversation. Thanks, Katie. I loved our chat. Thanks for listening. You made it all the way to the end. I'll be back next week, but until then, let's stay inspired and keep this conversation going. So tweet at me, at Katie Dalebow, and our guest with your aha moments from this conversation. And like the Wellness Wonderland on Facebook. 
so we can all hang out there and discuss how inspired we are and how we'll apply it in our daily lives. And never miss another episode or post from me by signing up for email updates on thewellnesswonderland.com. See you back in Wonderland.